Well, you guys, it is windy, it is humid, but nevertheless, it's pretty enough for me to be outside this morning cutting massive amounts of hydrangeas, these oak leaf hydrangeas and these Annabelle hydrangeas to bring inside for a dried flower bouquet that will last well into the winter time. I've been cutting them as fresh flowers and now it's time for me to kind of make that transition. So yesterday I was showing you how to know when it's time to cut them for a dried bouquet. And here is basically the difference. If you see these two different blooms here. So you can kind of see that this one is still white and it's fresh and it's kind of delicate. This one has already started to dry. It's adopted this kind of limey green color. And if you touch it, it sounds kind of papery. So these are the ones that I'm going for, these kind of papery sounding ones. Those are the ones that are gonna dry beautifully in the bouquet with little attention. If I cut them when they're fresh, they won't dry very well and they will just, um, well, they will just age just like a regular cut fresh flower and I'll have to toss them. So I wanna make sure I, they, I get them when they are in their mature state for cutting. So then, how do I know where along the stem to cut them? Well, the plant doesn't really care. It actually, the plant itself will benefit from me cutting. So I just determine where I'm gonna make that cut based on how long I want the stems to be. So I don't care too much if I'm doing it right above, like a leaf node or not. All I really care about is the length of the stem. So you can cut them just about anywhere along the stem and that is determined by how long I want um, the cut flower itself to be and maybe the height of my vase. Now I find inspiration everywhere and each year I cut a huge bouquet, particularly of these oak leaf hydrangeas because they make a mammoth um, arrangement for me to put on my library table in my living room and I can show you that maybe later when we go inside. But today I'm taking my inspiration from something that I saw in a magazine years ago. If you guys are like me, then you probably have all sorts of tear sheets, things that you have pinned or that you've saved on Instagram as inspiration for later. So um, I, I guess what really enamored me of this picture was the vases, even though they're pottery. Stuart, I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you see that now? Okay. The, the vases themselves almost look like they were tree trunks. They're a dark pottery. And I just happen to have some vases in my arsenal that look like tree trunks. Some of them I made and some of them I just had um, in my um, vase stash downstairs in the basement. So this one I made. And if you want to know how I made this bark vase, then I did a video for Southern Living on it. And we'll put a link to it at the bottom of this post so you can head there and see exactly how we did it. These other ones I have, they're hollow and they're kind of a faux bois. And I got these years ago at a thrift shop. I got two of them and they were $12. I love them. You can kind of see here that they're two different heights. So I have two of those. And I always like to do things in threes, so I've got a combo of three going here now. Now, I could do these huge, or I could do them a little bit more restrained. And today, I think I'm going to do them a little bit more restrained. I obviously have plenty to work with, and I've got more on the shrub if I want to cut more. So these I'm going to do, let me show you this picture again. It looks to me like it's kind of a blend of both fresh ones and dried ones though probably I'll just end up eyeballing it. Now, some of you have asked, do I have water in the vase when I'm bringing them in for a dried arrangement or do I not? Well, this is where I would tell you to just experiment because I do it both ways. Um, normally what I do, however, 
And inside these faux bois vases, I just have some plastic takeout containers. And I have about an inch or two of water in the container. That way they will stay kind of fresh, particularly the leaves for a couple of days, but there is a small enough amount of water in there that it will evaporate and then they will just dry in place and all I have to do is enjoy it from that point on. If I put too much water in here, they would stay fresher longer and I guess eventually this water would evaporate over time, but it could also get kind of stinky. So I don't use too much water and I also do, don't use anything like Oasis or um, any kind of agent. I guess I could put some chicken wire in here or something or some tape as a grid to support the stems, but I don't wanna put anything in there that over time will start to kind of rot and smell because again, these arrangements are going to be good into autumn, into winter, until quite frankly, probably next summer, I replace them again with fresh new blooms. So the rest of it is just kind of how I want to do it. This was the one that was kind of half dried, half fresh. So I think this one will still be a pretty good candidate. And sometimes I just start pulling them and seeing what inspires me in the shape of the flower to know which vase I want to put it in. And yes, sometimes I do work on three simultaneously. On this one, I have a little Lazy Susan, so I'll be able to show you how it can go and how it looks 360. So I've got my cut right here. I'm going to cut it again to make sure that if I want a little bit of water drawn up into it, then I'm going to either, I can either smash this with a hammer or I can just cut it vertically. And I think I'm just going to cut it vertically. Now I do like the way the leaves look in the arrangement. Granted, they won't dry and eventually over time they'll get crispy and I'll just have to discard them. But when the arrangement is new and I've got a little bit of water in here, I can enjoy that fresh green leaf for a little while. So I'm just going to kind of put that in there. I think I'm going to take a little bit more off. And then I'm just going to start working. I always remove any foliage, any leaves that are going to be underwater because I don't want them to rot. So for this one in particular, let me find my shears here. Same thing here. I'm just going to do a vertical cut right there and remove any tattered leaves. Let me move this one out of the way because I think I'm going to work on this one in the back first. Stuart, can you see that okay? Can you see that? Okay. Sometimes I forget which camera I'm supposed to look at and if I look at the wrong camera, Always remember whose fault it is. It is always Stuart's fault. Stuart is my photographer. Somebody asked me, does he mind if you call him your man Friday? And I said, he doesn't mind if he knows that I in a pinch will be his girl Friday if he needs me. We have each other's backs that way. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to cut this. And sometimes I like it to be a little bit asymmetrical so that the weight is a little bit more on one side than the other. Now you can see right here in the back, I can see that I've got some leaves and in the front, I don't. So here is another tip, if I can find an example. If you have sometimes a stem that has nothing but leaves on it, like this one, save these because what you can do later then is just tuck them 
so that you can see that leaf in front and I don't even have to have a flower head or anything on it. Okay, so I think I'm gonna steal from this one because I love the arch of this and I like the fact that it's got some leaves on it. This is all very uh, free form. It's not methodical at all, you guys. It's just going with the flow. I'm in no hurry. Ooh, that's starting to look kind of pretty. So now I want one. Ooh, that's got good drama. What do you think about that one, Stuart? Okay. This one I'd already cut, but I'm going to cut it again. Take off some of these lower leaves. Now, if I wanted these to really dry perfectly, completely in 360, then yes, some of you have asked, would I bring them inside and dry them upside down? Yes, I, I could do that. And if again, if I wanted them to be perfect and dry perfectly all around, I would do that. But these are actually going to dry and form fit into the vase itself. So I'm not so concerned about that. I'm gonna get the look, put it in place, and it's gonna kind of stay that way for as long as it dries. Well, let me get a taller one. And normally, just the way I do pots, I kind of do this thing where I like things in threes and there's kind of mama bear, papa bear, and baby bear. And this is gonna kind of be the papa bear. This, when I use three of them like this, it kind of takes the place of one huge arrangement. I can do three at, at various staggered heights. I think this one I'm gonna put um, on my dining room table. that. Let's see. See that beautiful blend of the lime green and that kind of fresh white because the oak leaf hydrangeas have more white to them as they dry. The Annabelle's dry pretty much in this lime green color with little uh, variation in color. But these oak leaves, and by the way, if you want to know what varieties these are, the really long oak leaf hydrangeas are snowflake. The ones that are a little bit shorter are I'm not sure what. but. And this year, I'm not sure why the snowflakes didn't get quite as long and pendulous as they normally do. I think because it got so hot so fast, they matured. A lot of times, these will get almost a foot long. This year, I think they may be topped out at about 10 inches. Some are longer than others. Typically though, they are really really long. Now you'll also notice on these oak leaf hydrangeas that there's kind of a good side and a bad side. One side has already started to brown, the other side is still fresh. So I put the fresh side up. Now, will they begin to brown over time as the arrangement ages? Yes, they will. But they will kind of take on this beautiful tawny color that is really pretty and I think speaks to fall. So it looks summery when they're a little bit younger and more fresh and then it takes on this more of an autumnal quality. Okay, so here I had planned on being a little bit more restrained <laughs> and it's already gotten pretty large but I think it's looking beautiful and again this is going to be in the center of my dining room table and my dining room table is fairly large so I think the scale of this will be just fine but I think it looks really pretty and how do you know you're finished you know you're finished when you run out of time so I could keep tweaking this but I think 
I am pretty happy with that. Stuart, do you see any place else where I might need some leaves or another touch of green? But I think it looks pretty. Okay, so I've done this one. And now I think I'm going to do, I'm going to continue with the smaller one. So I'm going to set this aside. Did I lollygag, Stuart? I tried not to lollygag. And now I'm going to do this smaller one. Now this smaller one would be great if you just wanted to have it like in your guest bath or you wanted to have it by your bedside table, this would be good for that. And this one, I think I will be a little bit more restrained on. So, like I say, I did a video. And go ahead and take off any little bips and bops that are already browning. It's been so windy, and that wind just really desiccates and dries out these blooms much more quickly than they would otherwise. But like I say, we did a video on how to make these bark vases, and basically it's just taking pieces of bark and hot gluing it to some kind of container. Ooh, that looks kind of sweet, I think. So I think on this one, I'm just gonna pretty much stop there. This does have a tiny, tiny little container in here with just a little bit of water, but I think it's small, I think it's charming. It all came from my garden. So thanks for arranging flowers with me. You guys have a great day, and I'm gonna finish up this last one.